Genesis chapter 8, verses number 22. Or let's begin from verses 20. Looking at the concept of altars, it came from God. And the idea of the altars is to give dominion to the saints on the earth. Genesis 8, verses 20. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the sweet servant, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again cast the ground any more for man's sake, for the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have down. Noah, after the flood, he built an altar unto the Lord, and God came down. In Genesis chapter number 12, the concept of altars came from God. It's God's an idea to bring God to a territory, to bring God to a family, to bring God to a marriage, to bring God into an organization. Genesis 12, verse 7. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there he built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And they removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, I on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. Who taught Noah how to raise an altar unto God? God taught him. Noah was the only righteous man at that time and his family on the entire planet earth and after after the flood Noah built an altar unto God that God gave that God gave Noah dominion on the earth when you build an altar unto God when you give God dominion over your life over your territory that also gives you dominion on the earth who taught Abraham how to raise an altar unto God? God taught Abraham. And the Bible says, after, after God had declared that unto thy seed will I give this land, there he built an altar unto the Lord and gave God dominion over his life, over his family, over his territory. Family is a territory. Marriage is is a territory institutions are territories a hospital is a territory a school is a territory a business is a territory when you raise an altar unto god you give god dominion over a territory your life is a territory your family is a territory your marriage is a territory your business is a territory hospital school is a territory so altars are raised to give god dominion over territories over what territories and when a satanic altar is raised unto satan it gives satan dominion over that territory and the bloodline after abraham after god had declared unto abraham I will, I will give this land your seed. Abraham built an altar unto the Lord. What is the purpose of that? The altars are a platform for the blessings to continue. That means whatever God has said will continue happening in that family even when Abraham is not there. Whatever God said to Abraham, every time God promised our patriarchs anything and their families they built an altar why to guarantee that even if i'm not there whatever you have said will continue to happen in this bloodline even when i'm not there 
Hello? Another definition of an altar that I'll be giving you is this. It authorizes continuity of spiritual activities on the earth. It what? Author write this one down. One major function of an altar is to give authorization and continuity of spiritual activity on the earth in an individual, a family, organization, a territory, or a nation, whether good or bad. A major function of an altar is to give authorization and continuity of spiritual activity on the earth in an individual's life, family, organization, territory, nation, whether it is godly or demonic. It gives continuity, continuity of spiritual activities. So every time God spoke either to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob about the blessings that he, he will be releasing to the family, you will see them raising an altar. Why? It's a platform that God, whatever you have told me, this altar is a platform for what you have told me to continue in my bloodline from generation to generation. And if it is evil, then the evil will continue in that, gen in that bloodline from generation to generation. All tasks authorizes continuity. Authorizes what? Continuity. That whatever God you have spoken concerning me and my family with this altar, let it continue. Let it what? Continue. So altars authorize continuity of blessings or continuity of evil activities in a family. That is why continuity is what produces patterns. What produces what? Patterns. Is what produces cycles. Is what produces reoccurrences. Somebody will say, the grandfather died because of cancer. The father died because of cancer at a particular age. That is a pattern. That is what? A pattern. That shows there is something that is powering the negative thing to continue happening in the family. Another definition of altar, it powers good or powers evil in a territory. It powers good or it powers evil in a territory. It powers good or it powers what? Evil. If it produced in the grandfather, if it produced in the father, what is producing that? The altar is powering evil. It powered evil in the lives of the grandfather. It powers evil. It powered evil in the lives of the father. If you don't break it, it will power evil in your life. If you don't break it, it will power evil in your children. If you don't break it, it will continue to power evil in your bloodline from generation to generation. It powers evil. Powers evil. For example, the altar that Abraham raised on behalf of Israel, it powers good for Israel. It powers victory for Israel. It powers prosperity for Israel. Anywhere a Jew is, that altar will be powering good in his life. Whether it's in America, whether it's in Russia, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Ethiopia, that altar will continue to power good in his life. And everyone that associates well with the Jew, it, it becomes, it takes advantage of that altar. And that altar begins to speak good for him. Hello, are you catching this thing? You associate with somebody that has a good altar. That altar will also affect you positively. You, affect, you relate with somebody that has a negative altar. That altar will also affect your life. What? Negatively. Look at Jonah. Jonah was running away from God. And the spiritual realm was working against him. Everybody that Jonah 
everybody that tried to help Jonah landed in trouble. Why? Because there was a and everybody that tried to help Jonah, that spiritual realm worked against him. Hello? It was a spiritual realm. A heavenly realm was working against him. So anybody that tried to help Jonah, that spiritual realm worked against him. Look at Jesus. He was in the ship. And people are about to perish. And because of him, the people in the ship were delivered. What? Were delivered. So an altar, an altar powers good. A godly altar powers good. A satanic altar powers evil. Somebody will say, my grandfather was died by cancer. My father died with cancer when they were about 50. Now you are 35. It's only 15 years before it catches up with you. So what do you do? You break it before it catches up with you. Because if it catches up with you, the process of trying to be delivered when it has caught up with you is a hard work. It's what? A hard work. Because when the root produces the fruit, and now you have to deal with the fruit and what? And the root at the same time. Don't say, I'm 35. It was 50. It's only 50 minus 35. It makes what? 15 years. So it is only 15 years before it catches up with you. And something is powering it. It is not happening on its own. It is a pattern. And a pattern is being powered by an altar. By what? An altar. One of, one of the litmus tests that there is an altar in your family is the occurrences. Is the negative inherited patterns. Is the negative cycles. The things that happen to the grandfather are happening to the fathers, are happening to the aunties, are happening to the cousins. That is to show you that there is an altar that is powering that evil. And you don't wish it that it will not happen to you. You break it. Otherwise, it will power evil into your life even if you are born again. That is why Psalms 11.3 says, If the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? Yes, you are born again. You are the righteousness of God. But something is wrong with your foundation. Something is wrong with your foundation. Something is wrong with your foundation. So what we do need, even if you are the righteous, for something, for you not to be limited, for you not to become a victim of Satan, we have to deal with the foundation. One of the things that produces a faulty foundation are satanic altars. Did you write that one down? Major function of an altar is to give authorization and continuity of spiritual activity on the earth in an individual, family, organization, territory, a nation. It powers evil in the family. So the evidence that there is a satanic altar in your life, look at these patterns. The negative inherited what? Patterns. Look at the negative cycles. Look at the negative occurrences. That the things that happen, they keep on happening from one generation to the other generation to the other generation. What is powering them? A satanic altar is powering them. That is why every time God spoke to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, about how bless your seed, their descendants will be great. They will build it an altar. Why? That, that on, this, on this altar, whatever you have spoken, let it continue in my life and in my bloodline. Because altars don't die. That whatever you have spoken, let it continue for my generation, from every, from ev for every generation in my bloodline. That is why the altar that Abraham raised in Genesis 12 affected the destiny of Jacob in Genesis 28. It did not affect another person. 
but only the generation, only the bloodline of what? Abraham. How many people passed by that place? Very many people. But the altar did not affect them. It affected the bloodline of Abraham. Is this thing entering? Hello? It guarantees continuity of spiritual activities. So if it is a demonic altar, it guarantees the negative spiritual activities in a particular word, bloodline. Hello? Is he entering? Is he entering? Some people, most of us, have not engaged in this thing. But our forefathers, grandparents, and maybe our fathers, engaged in these things. Maybe a parent or a father, a mother, wanted a promotion. And he went into an occult man, a mganga, and he said, I want a promotion. And the way it seems, people are not straight, so I need a promotion. And the mganga tells him, okay, are you sure you want a promotion? And he says, yes, I want a promotion. Are you willing to do anything to get that promotion? Yes, I'm willing to do anything to get that promotion. Okay. Are you very sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you willing to give the gods whatever they want? Yes, I'm willing as long as I get a promotion. Okay. Are you willing to surrender your entire family to these gods? Yes, as long as I get a promotion. I'm willing. Okay. Are you willing to sacrifice one member of the family for you to get that promotion? Yes, I'm willing. Okay. Now that you're willing, let's do incision. So that all the words you've spoken, let them be sealed with what? With the blood covenant. So, this mze, ama mama, anachanjwa, damu inatoka, iyo damu inamuagika kwa madhabau ya kishetani. That means from that day, you and your entire family belong to what? To the demons. This man lives there and he gets the promotion. But he has handed over the entire family what? To the demons. This man dies and the children don't know what he did. Now there, there's an altar that is powering evil in that family. Now the bloodline belongs to the demons. So the bloodline continues to suffer. They go through suffering. Marriages don't work. Homes break. Children don't succeed. Children don't flourish. And they're wondering, what is happening to us? Some people, whenever they get a blessing, they enter into trouble. Somebody will say, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I get a job, it just disappears. I get a job, I just have to talk badly to people. And the job disappears. I get a job, anger comes. And I cannot be able to submit. And this thing goes. Anger, you enter into a marriage. And you cannot submit as a wife. And the marriage breaks. You enter into another one. You are a beautiful woman. Very beautiful. But at the time in your life, there is a level you reach. You can no longer submit. You want to be the head. You want to be the boss. You can't submit. You bring problem, you bring kill, and that marriage breaks. And you wonder, what is wrong with me? An altar is powering evil in your life. An altar is powering a pattern. An altar is powering a negative occurrence in your life. Until you break the altar, the altar will continue to power evil. Is this thing entering? Hello? One man who wanted a job. Said, I'm willing. Are you sure? Yes, I'm willing. Will you give your entire family to the gods? Yes, I'm willing. Are you willing to sacrifice any member of your family for this? Yes. Who are you giving? 
I'm giving so and so. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Are you really very sure you want this promotion? Yes. Are you sure you're giving out your family to these gods? Yes. Okay. Remove your shirt now. Let's do the, the incision. Let's do kuchanjwa. And one man, alichanjwa. Na huyo mtu moja alichanjwa. Akapeana the entire of his bloodline to the demons. Now there is an altar. And the demons are there legally. You can't say the demons are there illegally. No. They are there legally. Why? A one, a member of the family, either a mother or a father, who was the priest of the home, handed over the entire family to the demons through an altar and through the blood covenant. Now nothing works. Why? You belong to the demons. They are the only one who can decide what you can achieve, what you cannot achieve. They own you. They determine what you can do, what you cannot do. They own you. Somebody that was a priest in the home. A father is a priest. After the father is the mother. The mother is the priestess. Did you catch it? When the mother does these things, they affect the children. When the father does these things, they affect the children. That is why when Josh raised an altar to Baal, it affected Gideon and affected the entire nation. That is why when Abraham raised an altar unto God, it affected his lineage, Isaac and Jacob. So altars power good or evil. They do what? Power good or evil. The altar that Abraham raised powers good for the Jews. Everywhere the Jews go, they prosper. Everywhere the Jews go, they succeed. Everywhere the Jews go. The forefathers of the nation of America, when the nation of America was being inaugurated, the fathers of those nations raised an altar unto God. And they handed over America to God. America did not reach where it reached by chance. It's rich because the forefathers were committed to God. That is why it was compulsory to have prayer in schools. Why? Because it was an altar was raised that handed over that nation to God. An altar was raised by Abraham that handed over Israel to God. Israelites, many of them are not born again. What is making them rich? The altar that Abraham raised. Everywhere Jews go, they prosper. When you work against the Jews, you will crash. When you side with the Jews, you will succeed. Why? There's an altar that was raised. And on that altar, God spoke. Let me give you an example again. We are going to prayer. I'm just giving you so that you know what we are breaking. Genesis 22. So that we don't go into things, you know, blindly. Genesis 22 verses 9. And they came to the place which God told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. And he laid the wood in order. And bound his son Isaac. Laid him on the altar upon the, wa upon the wood. Verses number 16, verse 17. And the angel, verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And said, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing. Now, God is speaking through that altar. And what will make these words to come to pass? The altar. Did what? The altar. In blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. As the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And because thou hast obeyed my voice, all these words are being perpetrated from one generation to the other generation because of the altar. 
Abraham is not alive. But whatever God spoke on this altar is still being powered by this altar. He's still working for the Jews. You come against them. And this altar will rise up against you. Fight against you. You bless them. You help them. This altar will help you. Hello? Learn a lesson from Jonah. Anyone that wants to help Jonah will enter trouble. Anyone that wants to help any nation against Israel will learn trouble, will have trouble, will suffer trouble. Why? Because of the altar. You can secure your life. You can secure your future. You can secure the generations to come, your bloodline, by raising an altar unto God. Altars are raised and they are maintained by sacrifices. By what? Sacrifices. You raise an altar, but you maintain that altar. By what? Sacrifice. Hello? Is things entering? Another thing, I want to give you an example. You are a Christian, and you are in an organization, and you are praying for promotion, for advancement in your career, in that organization, and all you do is pray. But there's one man there who decides, I'm going to pay the price for the promotion. Not in the godly world, in the satanic world. This is a man is wicked in the office. And this is a man you say, he can never be my boss. He can never be promoted. He can never be over me. But the man knows what to do that you don't know. This man goes to an occultic world. And he vows. And he gives a sacrifice. And he gives his family. And he says, I'm willing to do anything for the promotion. Yes, are you willing? Okay. What are you willing to bring on the altar? Tell me and I will bring it. It brings the family to the altar. It brings the children to the altar. Is willing to pay a, a sacrificial seed on the altar. And then he, he's, he does incision on that altar. Saying that whatever I have spoken, that is true. And I will stick by it. This man comes to the office, he gets a promotion. And you said he will never get a promotion because you are born again. This man, his, his life is being powered by a negative altar. You, you are only praying. My God, my God, answer me now. My God, my God, show me up now. My God, my God, answer me now. Without altar, you have no dominion. You have no one dominion. It is God who established altars on the earth to you to have, for him to have dominion and for you to have dominion. So an occultic man will, have, will be the boss in the office. He will be in charge in the office. Why? He has paid the price. There is an altar. It is a satanic altar, but it is speaking for him. You, your only thing is prayer. Is what? Prayer. Prayer. That is what Israel did. Second Kings chapter 3. Israel, Judah, Edom gave God offering. The Moabites, the, the king of the Moabites, sacrificed the son who won the battle. Who won the battle? That is why many believers are not having dominion in the marketplace. Why? They are only depending on prayer. It is altar that will give you dominion on the earth. You can be born again. One day, you may make it to heaven. But without an altar of God speaking to you on this earth, you will suffer defeat. You will suffer what? Defeat. Occult men will whip you. Occult men will whip you. Occult men will dominate you. Why? Because they are fighting through an altar. You are fighting with prayer alone. And then you say, God, what happened? How come this man got the promotion? The man paid the price that you are not willing to pay. Hello? Altars, you either bring God or you bring demons. What? To the scene. When the devil discovered this thing is working for bringing heavenly beings to the earth, he also said, ah, even me now, if you want to bring demons to a place, you want to give dominion to the demons in a place, raise an altar to the demons. You bring 
the, the, the demons to have dominion in a particular place, in a particular territory, in a particular bloodline. A bloodline is a territory. Genesis 13. Very fast, we go into prayers. But I want you to understand why we need to do this thing. Genesis 13, verses 3 and 4. And he went on his journey from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his stayed had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first and there, Abraham prayed or called on the name of the Lord. Abraham prayed through that altar. A man that prays through an altar and a man who does not pray through an altar, they are living in different worlds, very different worlds. A man that prays through the altar and a man who does not pray through the, through the altar, they are living in different worlds. An altar is an amplifier of prayer. Write it down. An altar is an amplifier of prayer. Solomon raised an altar. Solomon prayed first. God did not even answer. He raised an altar. God said, ah, even the prayer you prayed before, or this altar of sacrifice you have raised unto me, I have already heard and I have already answered. Altars. They amplify your prayer life. Genesis 13, 18. Are you there? Abraham said unto the Lord, Let there be no strife. Genesis 13, 18, sorry. Then Abraham removed his tent, came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in the Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Genesis 22, 9, I've shown you, and Abraham raised an altar there. Genesis 26, 25. Genesis 26, 25. Genesis 26, 25. Verses 24. And the Lord appeared unto him that same night, Say, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bless thee. Multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And there he built an altar there, and called upon the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dig the well. Whatever you have said, God, let this altar be witness that will continue to do it not only for me, but for my bloodline, even when I'm not there. Altars guarantee continuity of blessings. Continuity of what? Blessings. An altar of sacrifice raised unto God guarantees continuity of blessings. Even when you are not there, the blessings will continue. Genesis 33, verses 19. Genesis 33, verses 19. Genesis 33, 19. Are you there? And he bought a parcel of field, where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Amor and Shechem's father for a hundred pieces of money, and he erected there an altar and called a, called it Elolo Israel Elohi Elolihi Israel. He bought land and built an altar. You don't buy land and live there anyhow. You buy land and destroy the satanic altars. Build, give God dominion over that property. Many believers live anyhow. They live anyhow. So they suffer anyhow. He bought property. He didn't go just to stay on the property. No. He raised an altar on the property. He crowned God as God over that land. Genesis 35. Verses 1. God said unto Jacob, Rise, go to Bethel. Dwell there. 
and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau. That is God saying, go build an altar to me now. Go. Go to be there. Go. Go strengthen the altar of your father, of your grandfather. Your grandfather built an altar on that Bethel. Go, build an altar unto me in that place. Strengthen that altar. Strengthen it. It is God who said. So many people don't associate altars with God. God is the altar of altars. Not the demons. Satan is a copycat. He only copied. He said, if altars can bring God, altars can also bring me. And that is true. Altars can bring God and altars can bring demons to a particular family. So if you're born again, but you still see patterns of evil, you still see patterns of evil, you still see negative patterns, you still see negative cycles, you still see negative occurrences. It means there is an altar that is powering the evil because altars guarantee continuity. Guarantee what? Continuity. Salvation is powered by an altar. Powered by what? An altar. God raised an altar of salvation. What was the sacrifice? Jesus Christ was the sacrifice on that altar. And God gave the best in heaven on that altar of salvation. That is why nobody can defeat salvation. Why? It is powered by an altar. And that altar, God gave the best in heaven. That is why you can't fight it and succeed. The only altar that can succeed against the altar of salvation is the altar that can give the best than Jesus Christ. That is why God so loved the world, he gave his only, only begotten son. If God will have given angel Michael, that will not be the best. If God will have given three-thirds of the angels, that was not the best. If God will have given angel Gabriel, Angel Gabriel will have just said, God, let me die. But Angel Gabriel will not have powered that altar. He took the best in heaven to power the altar of salvation. Even God, that altar of salvation is bringing people from different nations on the earth to that altar. Through what? Jesus Christ. So the sacrifice on that altar was who? Jesus Christ. God believes in the altars. Do you know why one day you will make it to heaven? Because of the altar of salvation. Altar of salvation. That is why it is called altar call. What? Altar call. Come to the altar. It's an altar. Salvation is powered by an altar. Jesus Christ was a sacrifice on that altar. And that altar is calling many from different nations of the earth. You can't make it to heaven except through that altar. The altar of salvation. God has had billions of sons and daughters through that altar. What is powering salvation? The altar of salvation. God is powerful. How, did, how, how comes God did not just say, I command your sin to end? He's powerful. He could have said that. I command all the sins of the, saint, of the people on the earth to end. Why didn't God do that? Because that, he, he will keep on saying that. He will, when people say, he will sin, he will keep on saying those words. But the altar of salvation is there. The moment you run to that altar, you get born again. And the past sins are what? Erased. Is an altar that the sacrifice was the best in heaven. That is why God did not give an angel. No. That is why God did not give three quarters of the angel. It will not be, have been a powerful altar. Now that God gave his son, it is a powerful altar. The only altar that can fight that altar of salvation must be an altar that you have given something bigger than Jesus Christ. And there's nothing bigger than Jesus Christ. Whether in heaven or what? On earth. Because in the beginning was the word 
The word was with God. And the word was God. When God, that means God gave himself. He do what? He gave himself on that altar. That is why your altar, the best must be on the altar. The best must be on the altar. For the altar to have the power, to power good into your life. Has he entered after there? Are you ready now for prayer? Look, look, read Luke 1, 10 to 11. When Zechariah was sacrificing, giving incense unto the gun to God, then the angel came there. Altar, another division is a place where a platform, a system where spirit realm makes in contact with the physical realm. Is a place, a platform, a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm. So you're not a victim of altars because negative altars because you practiced one most of us are victims of altars because of inheritance because of what inheritance a priesthood a father or mother went somewhere and entered into a covenant with demons raised an altar that guarantees the continuity of the demonic activities in our bloodline. Now we are suffering, not because of our sins, but because of the sins of our ancestors, the sins of our grandparents, the sins of our parents. So as long as there's an altar powering evil, you will never be free from the evil. As long as there's an altar powering negative patterns in a family, then... Though the evil will continue, even though you are born again. If the, if the foundation be faulty, if the foundation is faulty, what can the Russians achieve? We are going to break these things. And the formula, you break the altar, you raise an altar. You do what? Break an altar, raise an altar. You don't break an altar and then stay like that. The demons are not dead. They will come back. You raise, you break an altar, you raise an altar. That is the formula for handing over God dominion over a particular family, over a particular territory. You buy a hospital. You don't, you don't just begin to run that hospital. Do you know who has dominion over that territory of the hospital? You don't buy a property a school and you begin to run the school do you know who is the spiritual dominion that has dominion over that school every territory that you buy you hand it over to God you do what hand it over to God you hand over the anointing with oil is good it is called dedication but now hand over Build an old town, the property, and give God dominion. More, we'll be tackling it in the course of the month. Now, want us to go and begin to now deal with these altars. What is the first thing to do? Repentance. We we'll repent for all the sins, all the iniquities that were committed by our ancestors, our grandparents our parents, and ourselves, our spouses, our children. So we're going to begin with James 5, 14 and 15. Heavenly Father, I bless this oil, convert it to oil anointing oil. I declare this is oil anointing oil in Jesus' mighty name. Two words quickly, and over the anointing oil. James 5, 14 and 15. I'll just be mentioning the scriptures because of time. We cannot read all of them. James 5, 14 and 15. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And even if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven. 
if he's suffering because of the sins he committed, he shall be forgiven. So we're going to begin and say, Heavenly Father, I repent of all the sins, the iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, my spouse, my children, myself, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, by this anointing with oil, forgive all the sins, the sins of idolatry, the sins that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children. Forgive us from all the sins, all the sins that powered altars, all the things that brought altars, all the sins that are brought curses, generational curses, negative related parties. Heavenly Father, forgive us of all the sins. In Jesus' name, now when you receive the anointing, be on your feet. And this is a serious session. Nobody can pray for you like you. So be on your feet and let's begin to pray. In Jesus' name, if you can, if you can, if you can, in the name of Jesus, now go ahead, begin to pray. Heavenly, all the sins, all the iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, Heavenly Father, with this anointing with oil, forgive all the sins in Jesus' name. Forgive all the iniquities in Jesus' name. All the sins of idolatry, all the sins and iniquities of idolatry that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children. Heavenly Father, forgive us of all the sins. Forgive us of all the iniquities in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, all the sins, all the iniquities of idolatry that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, by this anointing with oil, forgive us of all the sins. Forgive us of all the iniquities in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, by this anointing with oil, in Jesus' name, forgive me of all the sins, all the iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I repent of all the sins, I repent of all the iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, Heavenly Father, forgive us of all the sins, forgive us of all the iniquities, in Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, mercy, 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 in Jesus' name, forgive us from all the sins, all the iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, forgive us from all the sins, the sins of idolatry, the iniquities of idolatry that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Ephesians 1, 7. You can write down Ephesians 1, 7, Colossians 1, 14. You are going to declare all the sins committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, my spouse, my children, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I blow you out of my life, out of my destiny, my calling. I plead the blood of Jesus against the two sins, iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children. Dissolve, disappear from my life, my spouse, my children, in Jesus' mighty name. Use the blood of Jesus against the sins now, in Jesus' name. Open up your mouth and begin to pray, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, pray. Open up your mouth and pray. I plead the blood of Jesus against all the sins, all the iniquities of idolatry that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children. Dissolve now, disappear now from my life, from my destiny, from my calling, my spouse, my children, my family, marriage business, career finances, this ministry, all that concerned me. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus against all the sins, all the iniquities that were committed by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children. They dissolve now, they disappear now from my life, from my destiny, from my calling, from my spouse, my children, 
my family, marriage business, career finances, from this ministry, all that concerning me, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus, Colossians 1.14, Ephesians 1.7, I plead the blood of Jesus, again is, all the sins, all the iniquities, of idolatry, that were committed, by my ancestors, my grandparents, my parents, myself, my spouse, my children, they dissolve now, they disappear now, from my life, from my destiny, from my calling, my treasure, my children, my family, marriage business, career finances, from this ministry, in Jesus' name.